These pictures are nice and large. I have bolded words to refer to, and it would be very easy to see across the room if I was holding it up and showing it to someone. Hey sweet friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. If you're new here, I am a newly hired kindergarten teacher, but I did teach first grade in Tennessee. So today I'm gonna be showing you actually three portfolios. I'm gonna be showing you my student teaching portfolio and kind of explaining why it wasn't the best portfolio. And then I'm gonna be showing you the portfolios that I brought to my interview. And yes, I did bring two. For one, because it's COVID and I just didn't wanna be like passing binders back and forth. But for two, because I figured it was easier if I wanted to show them something, I could have it in front of me and then they could also have it too. And I could just say flip to this tab. So I did bring two teaching portfolios to my interview um, and mine had a few more notes than the one that I gave to my principal, but we'll get into that in just a sec. Also, I did have an online portfolio and this is what I actually sent out to principals when I was applying to schools. That way they could just click and kind of see a glimpse into me and my teaching. Um, so I would recommend having some kind of online portfolio. I did mine through Wix.com, which is what I like to make my websites through, but you could also make a linked um, PowerPoint presentation, which is I know what a lot of people do, but I liked that I could just make a shortened link and send it to principals or have it anytime I needed it. The next thing I have to say is my interview for the position I hold now was actually two interviews, but it was more a conversation. Like I came in and they were like, this is going to be more like a conversation. They're not gonna drill me with questions or anything like that, which took a lot of pressure off of me and I wish that every interview for teachers was like that and it wasn't tell me this tell me this tell me this tell me this because that's stressful and going into an interview is always nerve-wracking as it is so i didn't use my portfolio so much because we weren't talking about like how i run my classroom and things like that they were just trying to get to know who i was as a person but i was fully prepared to use my portfolio i did bring it up here and there um, but they were really more interested in talking to me so i don't really have example interview questions for you, but there's tons of other people out there who do. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you my portfolios and explain to you how you would use them. Also, I just wanna say this video is intended to be more a source of inspiration for you. I know a lot of you are student teaching right now and it's a little bit more difficult because some of you are online, but it's so, so important to document what you're doing take pictures, take videos, make sure you have some kind of sample for when you go into interviews. So if you like any of the wording that's in my portfolio, feel free to steal it. If you like anything that I did, feel free to copy it. I'm not putting my template with the stars and the stripes on TBT, I don't think, because it's really not a fancy template at all and you do not need to buy a fancy template. It can just be simple. You don't need any kind of clip bar, anything to make it fancy. I just put literally like the same thing on every single page. So let me go ahead and show you. So the first portfolio that I wanna show you is my student teaching portfolio. And it was not in this document holder. It was actually in this like leather portfolio, but I needed the leather portfolio. So I just moved it to here, but I did make copies of this teaching portfolio and I put it in these document holders that I just got from Staples and I handed those out. So this is the portfolio that I used when I was student teaching, looking for a job. You'll just have to pretend that it's in a nicer portfolio. So we have teaching portfolio and then this was my table of contents. I also did not have tabs or anything, I don't think, in my first portfolio. The first thing I have is my resume and I'm not showing you any of that because it's very personal, um, but I also did update my resume. So I did make my portfolio match my resume, um, but now I use something different. So this was just from TPT. When I was student teaching, this is what I had under certifications and awards. Next, I put in my Praxis scores. And again, keep in mind, this was in like a nice <laughs> fancy binder. So I know you can't really see right there. Also, I had the page numbers numbered down here. So this was my philosophy of education and you can steal the wording if you wanted. I kind of mishmashed different people's wordings and kind of made it more personal to me and made it what I liked. Next, since I didn't have a classroom, I just said this is my vision for my classroom. This was kind of a dumb page to have if I'm gonna be honest with you. And yeah, so it's way too many words and I just, I don't like it. This is what I had in my portfolio for behavior management. Obviously I was student teaching. I didn't have a system for myself. Feel free to steal the wording if you like the wording. This is just what I 
pad in there. But again, on this page, it's just, it's just too many words. And then this is what I had for communication. And this actually is very similar to what I did my first year, but that's everything I said. Next is a page on technology. Um, so basically I introduced Seesaw into the first grade classroom that I was in and my mentor teacher had a quote or she gave me a quote for my portfolio. Honestly, it's nice to say, oh, this is what I have in mind for technology. But again, in an interview, you're not going to be reading all this. And I only have a couple of pictures because I didn't really know what I needed in my portfolio. And then I had a watch me teach section in this portfolio with QR codes that I obviously can't show you. So this is what the page looked like. And it's better because I included an example of a worksheet, an example of an anchor chart, an example of the activity, and I talked about it. And it has the QR codes which show me teaching it. So while you're student teaching, make sure you record yourself because QR codes are a beautiful thing to have in your portfolio. Then I had this page which was an example read aloud page. I would never put this in my portfolio now, but I had it in there when I was student teaching because it's all I had. So. This is not really a good example and you would never want this in a portfolio now, but I had it in there when I was student teaching. And I had a page for math, which is a little bit better. I showed examples, um, but when you're in an interview, you're not gonna be reading a paragraph. So this is still kind of a bad example. Here's another thing that I wanted to put in my portfolio. This was something that I started doing when I was student teaching in first grade. So I kind of just gave an example of it. And then here was my science example and I'm just showing you because when you're student teaching you don't really have much to go off of so I just wanted you to see what I had. And then here's another example of a science lesson that I did and I have a picture in there. I've obviously covered up the faces but basically this is my whole portfolio. So I also did a social studies example lesson. This was actually a lot of fun but it was also a lot of work um, but I included that in there just so I could talk about it. If you haven't seen the video of my very first interview, it's kind of like a reaction video, make sure you click the I button because it's awful and I literally did not even open my portfolio because I was so nervous but I had it so this was a bad example of a teaching portfolio yes I had everything in there that kind of documented what I needed but it was not something that was very usable in an interview so I did have this leather portfolio. I think I purchased it maybe from Staples, but this is what my student teaching portfolio was in. Um, and I was going to use it for my interviews, but it honestly is just so much harder to flip and it doesn't stay down. So I ended up using a normal binder as well. So this is the portfolio that was sitting in front of me in my interview. So it has tabs over here, a table of contents, and I also made a few extra tabs that were not in the portfolio that I handed my admin. And this was specifically so that if they asked me about guided reading or centers or science or social studies or engagement, I would have a tab that I could flip directly to. The other difference is these pages are not laminated and in the portfolio that I gave my administration, all of the pages are laminated. Theoretically, you could laminate it, but I didn't feel like it. So this is the one that was in front of me. I also kept a cheat sheet. I'm not going to show you this cheat sheet because it is very personal, but I just had a couple of categories that um, I wanted to be able to refer to if they asked me something specific so that I could just glance down and I had a bullet there and I could list things because when I put on the spot, I tend to forget. So I just wanted to have something just in case. I don't think it's a bad thing to have a little cheat sheet in your binder or whatever you're looking down at. Also in this portfolio, I actually had handwritten notes. So you could obviously type up a completely different version, but I had other things that I wanted to talk about that I didn't necessarily put on my portfolio page. So my version had a couple of extra notes than the teacher portfolio did that I handed my admin. But other than that, in the tabs, everything is pretty much the same. So now I'll show you the one that I handed to them. So originally I just made this teaching portfolio and then I realized at the last minute it might be good for me to have a version two. That way I could talk to them about it and I wouldn't have to say, oh, let me show you and physically take it from them. I wanted to have an example in my hand and say, okay, if you go to tab number four, you can see this. So that's my reasoning behind having two. And every single page in here is also in a sheet protector. I had copies of my resume because I feel like that's just something you need to do when you go into an interview. And this is everything that I put in my actual portfolio. I did have a spot for distance learning plans. I wanted to show them that this was something that I was thinking about, even though I didn't have to do distance learning last year. Feel free to take inspiration. I did specifically list what was in 
each section just to make it easier whenever I would be looking for something. So I would know management systems, it'd be right after classroom rules on tab number four. And, and on every tab, I put another table of contents so that they wouldn't have to flip back and forth or so that I wouldn't have to flip back and forth. So that is probably something that might be helpful for you to consider. The other thing I did was I made sure that the title page of whatever we were flipping to would be shown when you flip to it. So it would always be on this left side. I took out my letters of recommendation because at the end of the interview, I um, handed it to them. I definitely keep a couple of copies in your binder. Behind the letters of recommendation, I have my evaluations and most of the times you're really not going to need this in your portfolio, but I wanted to have it just in case. So the next tab we have my teaching philosophy and I bolded more in this portfolio than I did in my student teaching portfolio because I really wanted to use it as talking points. So these bolded words were what I would use as talking points. If they asked me my teaching philosophy, I would open up to this page and I would let them know. If you go to this page you can see my teaching philosophy and I would briefly just talk about the bolded parts and that was kind of my plan again I do very poor under like public speaking pressure so having this was really really important for me the next tab is the classroom environment and organization tab so this is an example of what I had on this page I talked about flexible seating and what I did was I actually had a picture of my students in the flexible seating areas and I just put a little sign so you could see what they were because it's kind of hard to tell in a picture this is how I worded it and then I had an example of my student supplies I talked about our calm down corner I talked about how I organized my library and included a picture and you can see that this portfolio lends itself much better to an interview than my student teaching one did these pictures are nice and large I have bolded words to refer to and it would be very easy to see across the room if I was holding it up and showing it to someone Someone. Next, I have my command center, and this is just an example of how I organized things. I showed how I displayed my standards and my groups, um, and I could kind of talk about that here. And then again, I have my table of contents, so if I ever needed to quickly refer to something, I wouldn't have to be flipping back and forth. Also, I just wanted to say, when you use sheet protectors, unless you have a certain kind of dividers, you're gonna have to kind of rig it. So these were actually taped on, but I think it looks okay. So the next tab is classroom management. This is a big thing that I do in my class, so I I gave that as an example. And you can pause and read this if you want, but these are some of the management tools that I use in my classroom. This one is actually one of my favorites. So if someone is bugging you, you debug, so you just move away from them. I actually got that from a first grade teacher and I love that. So here's some of the things that I had that I could pull and talk about during the interview. And then I used this spread to talk about Class Dojo. I'm gonna cover up student names over here, but I wanted them to know how I use Class Dojo in my classroom and then our rewards for using Class Dojo and those procedures as well. So this was just um, a screenshot of all of my students in class dojo. I showed the positive, the negative, and then the rewards. On the next page, I did another example of classroom management. So this is something that I used my first year. And then I showed an example of our morning routine. So I would always leave a morning message. The students' names are right here because they would sign in on our board. And then I talked about our morning STEM bins. On the next tab, I'm talking about my teaching highlights. So weekly PowerPoint, literacy, guided reading, centers, math, science, social studies, engagement strategies, anything that had to do with teaching I put it in my teaching highlight so the first one is our weekly PowerPoint this is how I ran my day and again I wanted to make sure anything that I really wanted to make sure I talked about was bolded I would try to put as few words as possible honestly I did want it to look put together so it is in sentence form um, but on your version you could literally just have bulleted things that you wanted to talk about in the portfolio that was sitting in front of you next I have a literacy page and a guided reading page guided reading was something I definitely wanted to talk about and kind of explain my system for I have a guided reading kit on TPT that I highly recommend especially if you teach first grade um, then I have rhyme magic and sight words because I did those in my class every single day then we go into our guided reading routine and center accountability because these kind of go together so I explained my routine for sight words and I included a picture of me in guided reading and then I explained what I do for centers and kind of my management system for that which worked out really really well next I have a center organization and center example this page is basically full of pictures of my students in their centers because I would send home photos to the parents on class dojo so 
this is what our sight word center looked like this is what our writing center looked like this is what math centers looked like and on this page this is the powerpoint that i put up whenever we went to centers so this green bar kind of shows what day we're on i have my groups labeled here and every kid in the group has a picture so they know exactly where to be there's a visual and i also explained that down here and the next pages talk about math social studies and science so you can read it if you'd like there are pictures over here this one's not showing their faces so i'm good and on these pages i really just wanted to talk about how i teach math and how i teach social studies and science and i had examples in mind that i could talk about on the next page i had some engagement strategies and you saw in my other portfolio that i had a few more listed down but this is one that i just wanted to show then again we have another table of contents and then we have assessment examples this is a big one for teaching so i wanted to make sure i had examples of assessments that I do during lessons, after lessons, after units, after a specific skill, weekly progress, all of the assessments. And the next page gives examples of those assessments. So over here, I kind of wanted to show how I would differentiate the same exact assessment. And then over here, I gave examples of themed assessments. So my classroom transformations. And then here's the one on fractions. I kept it very, very brief because in an interview, you're not gonna talk for 20 minutes about one lesson that you did. So I didn't wanna put, you know, six paragraphs of what this was about. On this page, I talked about our number bond and fact families escape room. I gave examples of the activities. This is just a picture that I can't really show. And on this page, I talked about the fairy tale writing unit that we did in first grade. Now we're going into communication and community. So it takes us right into parent communication. I use Class Dojo and weekly newsletters. And then we have Class Dojo updates and Class Dojo challenges. I really, really like Class Dojo. If you're not familiar with it, I do have a video if you click up in the I button. But I basically basically screen recorded things that I was sharing to our class story. So there's like an actual screenshot of what I sent home to parents just so I could kind of give an example or if they wanted to see just a quick overview. Oh, what does it look like to have Miss Call communicating with parents? And then over here I talked about um, these pictures are nice and large. I have bolded words to refer to and it would be very easy to see across the room if I was holding it up and showing it to someone. And then over here I thought it might be fun to talk about our winter break dojo challenge. So I just sent home a bunch of little challenges through Class Dojo, just another way that I used Class Dojo. Next, we get into the community page. So I showed this interactive bulletin board that we did that helped build community. And then I talked about some things that we do in our classroom. And these are obviously covering student pictures. And then the last tab is distance learning. So I have an example of a Google Classroom, um, even though I'm using Google Sites for kindergarten because it's way more friendly. But if they needed me to use Google Classroom, I wanted to show them that I could. And then on this page, I really just wanted to show them examples of things I was considering so yeah that's it on the next page I wanted to show them my digital learning goals so this is kind of how I wanted to start digital learning and then I have professional development that I've done this summer not that they would really care but just to show that I'm a lifelong learner and I like to learn so that is the last of my portfolio and then on the very back, I have this picture because it just makes me happy. So that was my teaching portfolio or teaching portfolios. If this video was helpful, make sure you give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more future videos. I am going to be vlogging what it's like to teach kindergarten virtually, which so far has been a trip. So make sure you're also following me over on Instagram because I share a lot over there. I'm pretty accessible. Um, if you need anything, just send me a DM. I respond to all of my comments. Thank you guys so much for being here and good luck.